हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक द नेक्स्ट यूनिट लैरिंग्स द एम्ब्रियोलॉजी ऑफ लैरिंग्स नो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट विद दिस टॉपिक इन दिस एंटायर यूनिट ऑफ लैरिंग्स आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू सक्सेस मंत्रास ओके देर आर सेवन सक्सेस मंत्रास दैट आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू लेट स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट सक्सेस मंत्रा एंड दैट इज आई विल फिगर इट आउट यू नो यू फाइंड सम टॉपिक्स टफ दे आर एक्चुअली नॉट टफ many students they come to me and they say that sir larynx we find as the toughest topic i say it is the easiest topic of ent right and the maximum questions are concentrated in this easiest topic it's just that we don't study it you have a fear of it that's why you find it tough no it's not tough okay if you have that mentality okay i'll study it i'll revise it i'll figure it out you'll always figure it out okay so that is what happens you know when you start studying when you are preparing for the exam i will figure it out at the go and in the beginning you never know the entire path we just have to get out of your home you have to walk the path you have to travel and then you will know the path also okay right so at the at the beginning only if you are making the entire plan and you think that you will make a full entire plan it will not work out that way so you'll have to go out you'll have to figure it out same way when you are preparing for the exam don't think that in the end on the day one itself you will know about the entire journey okay just start studying and soon and or later you will figure out how you have to succeed right so that's my first mantra to you right okay so let's start with the larynx larynx is formed by fourth and sixth brachial arches the fourth and sixth brachial arches they fuse to form the larynx right so let's discuss about these arches blood supply now the fourth arch is supplied on the right side by right subclavian artery on the left side by arch of aorta right the sixth arch on the other hand is supplied on the right side by right pulmonary artery and the left side by ductus arteriosus okay remember ductus arteriosus in the adult life it becomes fibrosed and is known as ligamentum arteriosum okay this is known as ligamentum arteriosum this is important why it is important because you know uh, there is a nerve that goes and turns around and comes back so we'll discuss that later right okay then let's talk about the nerve supply so fourth arch and sixth arch they are both supplied by vagus 10th cranial nerve okay fourth arch is supplied by superior laryngeal nerve terminal branch of vagus and the sixth arch is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve okay sixth arch supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve that is again branch of vagus okay so why it is known as recurrent because it goes takes a turn and come back takes a turn and come back on the left side it takes a turn it's a sixth arch nerve so it takes a turn around the sixth arch vessel which is that ductus arteriosus which is that ductus arteriosus okay and this ductus arteriosus in adult life becomes ligamentum arteriosus i mean takes a turn around ligamentum arteriosus and then comes back right okay so that is that was on the right side on the left side on the right side recurrent takes a turn around the sixth but the sixth arch artery disappears fifth arch we don't have so fourth arch fourth arch means what was the fourth arch right side yes you can see right subclavian artery you can see the right side was right subclavian artery sixth arch artery disappears okay so what remains fourth arch artery For fifth is anyways not there so the right side takes a turn around right subclavian artery so recurrent laryngeal nerve remember left side and right side okay so left side takes it turn around ligamentum arteriosum some people call it arch of aorta no actually it is taking it turn around ligamentum arteriosum okay and the right side takes it turn around right subclavian artery all right and because of that the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is longer it has a longer cardiothoracic pathway all right so we'll discuss more about it later right let's look let's go forward and talk about the muscles so all the constrictor muscles of pharynx so we discuss the constrictor muscles superior constrictor middle constrictor inferior constrictor inferior constrictor has two parts 
thyrophoryngeus and cricophoryngeus. This we have talked in pharynx. Okay, so all constrictor muscles of pharynx except cricophoryngeus is supply is formed by fourth arch. So therefore, we we studied this. They are supplied by superior laryngeal nerve. Okay, then cricothyroid muscle. This is the only intrinsic muscle of larynx. Okay, only intrinsic muscle of larynx which is formed by fourth arch. Therefore, it is also supplied by superior laryngeal nerve. Right? Okay. Now, on the sixth arch, what do we have? Cricopharynges we discussed, and all the remaining intrinsic muscles of larynx. So, all intrinsic muscles of larynx except cricothyroid, they are supplied by which nerve? Recurrent laryngeal nerve. Right? So, all these are very important MCQs. Right from the embryology, if you remember the embryology, you'll remember all these MCQs straightforward. Okay? What else do we have? We have the cartilages of larynx. And larynx cartilages we know are formed by the fourth and sixth arch. Now, how do the fourth and sixth arch form? Now, see over here, fourth arch along with the third arch forms hypobranchial eminence. It forms hypobranchial eminence. Now, hypobranchial eminence forms posterior one third of tongue. Remember that we started in the oropharynx, base of tongue, okay, as well as epiglottis. Now, if somebody asks you posterior one third of tongue is formed by, answer is hypobranchial eminence. Epiglottis is formed by hypobranchial eminence. Now, but if, if you say hypobranchial eminence is not given in the choices, then what will you mark? So, remember the part that forms the hypobranchial eminence from the third brinkle arch that form the posterior one third of tongue mainly and the fourth arch it mainly forms the epiglottis right so if hypobranchial eminence is given that is the best answer if however that is not given in you are asked epiglottis is formed by then your answer can be fourth brinkle arch other than this the fourth brinkle arch also forms the thyroid corniculate and cuneiform Okay, thyroid, corniculate, and cuneiform cartilages. Okay, so whereas the sixth arch, sixth arch, CA, CA stands for cricoid and arytenoid. Okay, so sixth arch forms your cricoid and arytenoid cartilages. Right, okay, so this is a very short and sweet embryology of the larynx. A lot of questions are asked from this. Right? So, just remember it is by the fourth and the sixth arch. And if you remember what all structures are formed by fourth and sixth arch, what are the nerve supplies of fourth and sixth arch, correct a lot of questions from of the larynx.